story about the two fathers I had. Obviously, one was my real father, my biological father, and the other one was my best friend's father. One was a Ph.D. in education, a brilliant man. He graduated from uh, college in less than two years. He went on to Stanford, University of Chicago, and Northwestern, and he finally got his Ph.D. The other dad was a man who dropped out of high school because his father died and he had to take over the family business. So one dad was educated and one dad was uneducated. One dad was rich and one dad was poor. The irony of the whole thing, it was my uneducated dad who became one of the wealthiest men in Hawaii where I grew up. It was my poor dad who was the educated one. He was a government employee. He uh, made a substantial salary, but the problem was no matter how much money he made, he was always short of money at the end of the month. And so Rich Dad, Poor Dad is really a story about what these two very strong, honest, hardworking men taught their sons, my best friend and I, about the subject of money. In Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I talk about the six basic lessons that my rich dad taught me relative to the subject of money. Uh, The first one was the rich don't work for money, which is quite contrarian to what my poor dad, my educated dad, said. He always said to go to school, get good grades, and find a nice, safe, secure job and work hard. In other words, work hard for money. And what my rich dad said, never do that. Always learn how to have money work hard for you. And so one of the big differences I'm going to get at on this tape is that it's often the very simple beliefs we learned as kids or young people, either handed down from our parents, our friends, or from the school system that determine the outcomes in our life or the life's path we take on. You see, if you say to somebody, go to school and get a nice, safe, secure job, become an internal navigation system, which caused you to go out and look for certain things. So it was my poor but highly educated dad that said, go out and look for a safe, secure job or a good company to work for. And what my rich dad said, I don't do that. He says, go to school. Both recommended getting my college degrees. Yet he said, after college, go out and look for a good company to buy. And in that slight difference determined the internal navigational system of the brain and that's what caused me to go out and look for different things and to gain different skills along the way. Instead of looking for a job, I started to look for how does a person go out and buy. So from the age of nine, my rich dad was guiding me to become a person who acquired companies rather than a person who worked for one. And in that slight difference at at a very young age, like the age of nine, that made all the difference in the world way down the road. We all have had incidents in our lives where something's changed. You know, we had some incident that shocked us or woke us up. And for me, the wake-up call was when my highly educated but poor dad was downsized at the age of 50. And here he was, a Ph.D., who all, all he ever knew was to work for the government. Suddenly at age 50, being told that, he can't ever work again. And that was the end of my dad's. And I started to realize it, you know, when he was 50 and I was about 20 at the time, I realized that he had, I wouldn't follow his life path. I would not do as he told me or advised me, which was to get a nice, safe, secure job, because I didn't like what I saw happen to my dad. And I, I decided at that time, just as I was getting out of the military, that I would follow my rich dad's advice, which was not to get a safe, secure job for a good company, but learn how to buy good companies. And those are the things that change. Yet, I still would not have said anything if I had not seen what I consider the, some of the greatest changes of all happening right now as as we approach the year 2000 and beyond, is that what concerns me is the idea of a nice, safe, secure job is an idea of the industrial age. And in 1989, when the Berlin Wall came down, I really suspect that we ended the industrial age and went into the information age, and as they say, the rules have changed. And the problem is the rules have changed, but people's ideas have not changed. And I still hear parents advising their kids go out and get a nice, safe, secure job when when businesses have changed. See, in the industrial age, the rule was that if you worked for a company all your life, and if you retired at age 65, the company would take care of you for the rest of your life. And if a business didn't do such a good job, then the government, like in America, it's Social Security or uh, the pension plans in other countries, they would take care of you and supplement your income. So the The message was to the people that you never had to worry about finances, investments, or being a good money manager because when your working days were through, somebody would take care of you. In my opinion, what that bred was the entitlement mentality, or what I call the welfare state mentality. And in the information age, Russia went broke. 
And my concern is for the very first time, America's debt load and also the entitlement load, which is really the biggest load of all, may bankrupt the United States around the year 2010 to 2030 in there, just at about the time my generation, the baby boom generation, begins to retire. So that's why I really came out and decided to write a book about what my rich dad taught me versus my poor dad taught me, because it is time that we all, as Bob Dylan says, you better start swimming or you'll sink like a stone. <laughs> and we do need to learn about money since our school system does not teach anything about money. So that's why I wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad. That's why I have the game Cash Flow, which teaches finance, investing, and accounting simultaneously, as well as our other educational products that assist people in you know, taking control of their financial future. And those are the two main reasons why I'm actually doing this. I don't need the money, but I do it because I think there's a need for it and there's an urgency for it. And I want to say some of the things I'm going to be saying today may rattle some or disturb some of your belief systems. My intention is not to upset or disturb anybody or invalidate, but more point different points of view. And, and if you'll just listen to the different points of view, maybe you can make your own decisions for your own life here.